You're absolutely right. And, um, you know, it's it's both impressive what they've managed to do there, but it's also infuriating that these kind of examples are so rare, so few and far between. Uh, we're, we're all impressed with it because it's not happening everywhere. This kind of thing should be happening everywhere. And there are there are structural things that we can do uh, around that. You know, the, 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 the opportunity uh, to acquire the land uh, at its economic value rather than its market value would be one really important way. Uh, you know, this, this should not be a, a situation as well where big landowners uh, can simply treat the community as though they're another potential buyer. Uh, you know, the, there should be clear legal rights involved. Uh, you know, the, the, the land that we live in uh, and on and with uh, needs to have a much more innate connection. Uh, land value tax, uh, I'm actually just seeing a comment on land value tax as well in the, uh, in the chat box there. Land value tax is fundamental to this as well. Land value tax would not only raise money locally uh, from the, the value of land, uh, it would also uh, help to suppress the artificially increased, uh, artificially inflated value of land. Land values are mostly created by the public, by the things that we do, the way that we live, and by public investments, uh, as well as decisions like planning permission. These things uh, dictate and, and distort and, and inflate land values. And the vast majority of that land value uplift is captured by landowners. Uh, people uh, like some of the Scotland's biggest landowners who uh, only, only have title to that land because their ancestors stole it in the first place. We need to be recognizing there's an historic injustice in that. There, there is also an ongoing uh, you know, contemporary injustice as well. A land value tax would help to give a, an economic incentive away from uh, big landowners hanging on to that land. Uh, uh, and it would help to uh, create economic incentives toward more distributed land ownership patterns, which again uh, would, be, would be much more comparable to, to the European norm. We're, we're an outrider. We're unusual uh, in the way that uh, our economy has, has been shaped over a very long time toward this uh, accumulation of land uh, in the hands of those uh, who have the, the least, maybe the most economically invested in it, but the least uh, invested in a more meaningful way uh, in how that land is, is used. So there are real legal changes that we could make uh, that, would, uh, that would certainly allow, uh, you know, the, 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 the situation to be made much easier for communities like Langham to, to, to take things forward. Uh, development as well uh, is, is an element of this as well, because... Although development uh, by what I was saying earlier, the big volume house builders is not the, the right way that we should be going ahead with, with deciding what housing to build and where. If you made communities have the, the right to acquire land uh, at its existing use value and then seek planning permission uh, in order to build the houses that they think or the other forms of development that they think are, are, are valuable, then the, the uplift in land value that comes from planning permission, again, that would be taken away from landowners and given to the communities. They could then decide, we've got this increased land value in public hands, in community hands. We'll decide uh, who we're going to invite in uh, to be the developer uh, and whether we're going to sell off uh, part of this asset to the private sector or keep it in community hands for the long term. So there are, there are structural changes that would make this so much easier for people.